South Korea, a country renowned for its picturesque natural scenery and rich cultural heritage, lies under the shade of the Taibik and Sobik mountain ranges. In South Jiangsang Province, people live in peaceful villages with traditional architecture. However, in 1982, a horrifying tragedy occurred there, shaking the entire nation. 56 people, from the elderly to children, were murdered in one night, and the perpetrator was only one person. So what happened? Let's revisit this case to learn about Wu Bum Khan, the killer in the guise of a police officer. Wu Bum Khan, born on February 24, 1955, was a South Korean police officer. At the age of 27, with a height of 1m84 and weighing 86 kilograms, Wu had a strong appearance, but inside was a troubled soul. On April 26, 1982, in a small house in Togakri village, Yuriang district, Wu returned home around 12, noon to rest after lunch, preparing for his afternoon shift. His girlfriend, Chun Mao Soon, accidentally hit Wu's chest while trying to swat a fly on her shoulder, waking Wu up and angering him. He slapped Chun in the face and went out to drink. This was the explosive moment that led to a series of horrific events that followed. At 7.30 p.m., Wu returned home and saw his girlfriend talking to her cousin. Suspecting that they were talking bad about him, Wu didn't say a word, rushed in and beat Chun and her cousin, smashed furniture in the house, and left again. His rage had just begun. Wu went to the police station where he worked, and while only a few officers were on duty, he sneaked into the armory and stole two M2 carbine rifles, 180 rounds of ammunition, and seven grenades. Leaving the police station, Wu encountered a 26-year-old man passing by and immediately shot him dead at 9.40 p.m. Then, he entered the post office and opened fire, killing three people on duty there, and quickly cut the phone lines. The first gunshots rang out, signaling a terrifying night to come. Wu continued his massacre at the Togakri market, throwing a grenade into a crowd of people who were trading, causing 10 casualties. Among the crowd was Chun Mao Soon, his girlfriend, who heard the loud explosion and ran out. Wu aimed at Chun, but luckily she survived. However, the bloody scene caused an indelible trauma in her heart. Around 10.30 p.m., Wu took an 18-year-old young man hostage, forcing him to go with him to a grocery store to buy water. After finishing the can of water, he shot the young man in the head in front of the shop owner's family. The family panicked and ran away, but Wu opened fire, killing the wife and two children. The grocery store owner luckily survived despite being shot in the shoulder and leg. This horrific scene caused extreme fear in the community. Wu continued his massacre in other villages in Unjiri. Disguised as an armed police officer, he was trusted and unsuspecting by the people. With a cold-blooded thirst for blood and brutality, Wu easily opened fire and killed a total of 18 people in this village. Gunshots rang out everywhere, the screams of innocent lives made the atmosphere gloomy and mournful. At this time, the police station where Wu worked received a report. However, it took an hour for the police to mobilize 37 soldiers to track him down. The incident was only reported to the Seoul National Police Headquarters at 1.40 a.m., turning the night of April 26 to 27 into a terrifying nightmare for the innocent people of South Jiangsang Province. At 12 o'clock at night, in a small village in Pyongkhananai Province, Wu continued his killing spree. At this time, the whole village was attending a big funeral. Wu lied that he was receiving alerts from North Korean spies and was on duty. The host, unsuspecting, invited him into the house for dinner. While the whole family of 13 were eating with Wu, a cousin of the host suspected and joked that Wu's gun looked like a fake gun. Immediately, Wu opened fire and killed 12 people in the family, one was seriously injured. He continued to go out and shot and killed eight more innocent victims. Blood dyed the village red, fear engulfed everywhere. Wu continued the massacre until the police mobilized forces to track him down. At 3.40 a.m., Wu found refuge on a farm and took the farm owner's family hostage. When the police broke in, Wu detonated two grenades, killing himself and three hostages. In total, Wu killed 56 people and injured 36 in just one night. Wu's insane actions ended, but the pain and loss never faded. The massacre left many families grieving the loss of loved ones and shook all of South Korea. The South Korean Minister of Home Affairs and the National Police Chief offered to resign to atone. 
many provincial officials were suspended and arrested for negligence in weapons management and slow intelligence handling. In 2018, local residents filed a complaint with South Jiangsang Province to build a memorial for the victims. After many petitions, the government agreed to allocate 1 billion won from the special subsidy tax and confirmed the construction of the memorial park expected to be established in the first half of 2024. The Wu Bongkan case is one of the most horrific massacres in Korean history. It emphasizes the importance of gun control, police force management, and mental health care to prevent similar tragedies from happening in the future. To better understand Wu Bongkan's motive, we need to look back at his past. Wu Bongkan was born into a police officer family, the third of four sons. His original address was in Jiang Sangbok. Wu's childhood was not troubled and he often boasted that he would become a police officer like his father. However, Wu's introverted personality began to show when he was in high school at Jimseon School. He lost interest in studying, often skipped school, and was criticized by teachers for lacking responsibility and independence. A significant event occurred when Wu was in his third year of high school, his father died of rectal cancer before being promoted. The death of his father caused Wu's family status to plummet. Wu ranked 63rd out of 65 students when he graduated and became a poor student. After graduating from high school, Wu attended Jiangnam Information Technology College in Busan, but soon after, he joined the military and served in the Korean Marines. In the military environment, Wu showed excellent sniping ability and was recognized as a highly skilled shooter. However, after being discharged from the army in 1978, his life began to take a dark turn. After leaving the military, Wu became a police officer and his first job was as an officer in the Ganman 3 Police District, under the Nambu Police Department in Busan in 1980. Shortly after, in 1981, he was selected to work in the 101st Guard Team in the capital city of Seoul and worked as a security guard for the Blue House for eight months. However, Wu was transferred midway and was assigned to Kungyu Police Station in Yuriang District, South Jiangsang Province, which is his current job. Right from the time he worked in Busan, Wu showed a dictatorial personality, such as being careless and threatening to beat suspects. Wu had a severe alcohol addiction, and the reason he was removed from the Blue House security force was because he was deemed unfit for duty due to constant drunkenness. His drinking habit made his personality more violent, and he often abused his power to assault prisoners. Even after being transferred, Wu drank more than even while working and often quarreled with colleagues, who nicknamed him Crazy Tiger, true to his temperament. Wu was very self-deprecating when he felt that he was pushed down from the city to the countryside to work by society and his superiors. In Pyongkananai village, while having dinner with a family of 13, he complained about his meager salary and his suspension from Busan to the countryside. Chun Nao Soon, Wu's girlfriend, revealed that he was self-conscious and upset by the villagers' gossip about them living together when they were not married. Colleagues and girlfriend's family also isolated and disliked his grumpy nature. The Wu Bongkan case is one of the most horrific massacres in Korean history. It emphasizes the importance of gun control, police force management, and mental health care to prevent similar tragedies from happening in the future. This incident also shows that the slow and ineffective response of the authorities can lead to such catastrophic consequences. To avoid similar tragedies, there is a need for profound and drastic reforms in the management and crisis management system. Wu Bumkan, the killer with the appearance of a police officer, left a deep wound in the hearts of the Korean people. His massacre is not only a costly lesson about the management and administration of the authorities, but also a wake-up call about the importance of maintaining a safe and equitable society for all.